The first step when doing a penetration test is to gather information about your target. This is considered one of the most important steps because the information you gather will dictate how you choose to attack your target. For example, discovering employee emails on a LinkedIn page may lead you to creating a phishing email against those employees. Or after finding multiple domains for different web applications, you may come across a web vulnerability on one of those applications that gives you a foothold onto the target's internal network. All black box penetration tests start with gathering open source intelligence, or OSINT, in order to learn as much about your target as possible and figuring out how to attack them from there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about one popular tool that can automatically do some of this open source intelligence gathering for you, and that tool is the Harvester. The Harvester is a command line tool used to gather information on emails, domains, subdomains, open ports, banners, and more from open sources such as search engines, Shodan.io, and other servers. The Harvester comes pre-installed on Kali Linux, and we can look at the help menu by typing the Harvester-h into our terminal. Here we can see all of the arguments that we can supply to the Harvester to run it how we want. The first argument is the domain, or dash D switch, that lets us input the target domain that we're trying to gather information on. For example, if we're trying to gather information on the organization CompTIA, then we would use the argument dash D space CompTIA.org. Next, if we wanted to limit the number of search results that we get to speed up our scan, we can use the dash L argument and give it a number. The next interesting argument is the dash P argument or proxies argument that lets us forward our traffic through a proxy first if we were trying to mask our IP address. The dash S or Shodan argument will attempt to query any host that we discover in Shodan to gather more information. And I plan on doing a full video on what Shodan is and how to use it next week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. The argument next on the list is the dash dash screenshot argument, which will try to take screenshots of the different domains that are discovered and saves them to a directory that you specify. And an important note here that using this argument will no longer make this a passive reconnaissance scan as we would be attempting to connect to the domains and screenshotting the resolved index pages. If we want to save the output of the scan to a file, we can use the dash F command. And then lastly, and probably the most important argument on the list is the dash B or sources argument. This lets us specify which tools, search engines, or other sources that we want to use to look up for intelligence. For example, if we wanted to just use the search engine DuckDuckGo, we would use the argument dash B DuckDuckGo. We can set multiple different sources by separating them with commas, or we can run our scan against all sources by using the argument dash B all. We can see all of the different available sources down at the bottom of this help page, and some sources you may recognize right off the bat are Bing, DuckDuckGo, GitHub, VirusTotal, and Yahoo, but every single one of these sources could provide us with different and useful information. Just a heads up that doing dash B all without setting any limits may take a while depending on the domain that you're scanning. All right, now that we've covered most of the different arguments, let's gather some intelligence on a target. For this demonstration, I'm going to be looking for information on the organization CompTIA. And since we're only doing passive scans and gathering intelligence from open sources, these scans are completely legal and do not require permission to run. So I'm going to run a quick scan against CompTIA.org using all available sources, but limiting the number of results from each source to 20. And I'm going to do this by typing the harvester-d CompTIA.org-b all dash L20, and then using the dash F argument to save the results to the home temp CompTIA directory. As soon as we hit enter, we see we get a bunch of warnings that we're missing API keys from different sources. And this is because some of the sources require an API key to use them to search for intelligence. Most of these modules that require API keys, you're able to get them for free, like GitHub code and VirusTotal, but some cost money or require a subscription. And I'll show you how to get the API keys for GitHub and VirusTotal a little later on in this video. Once we scroll past the missing API key warnings, we see the Harvester running its searches against the sources that it can. If we look a little closer, we can see that the Harvester can even determine when it runs into captures, which may hinder the results of our scan. Once the scan completes, we'll see the results of any interesting URLs, LinkedIn links, IP addresses, emails, or hosts that were discovered. In our case here, after searching CompTIA.org, we found 50 interesting URLs, 159 IP addresses associated with CompTIA, and 225 different host names. And this is after limiting our search to just 20 results per source. And we can see some pretty interesting in the results like intranet.comptia, admindev.api.comptia, email.comptia.org, remote.comptia, and obviously a whole bunch more. But if we wanted to use any of the sources that require an API key, we will have to generate the API key for whatever source that we're trying to use and place it in the etc, the harvester, API keys.yaml file. I'll show you first how we can generate our GitHub API key in order to look at information that we can find on GitHub. And then I'll quickly show you how to do the same thing in VirusTotal. For GitHub, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is sign into our GitHub account or create one if you don't have one. And then next we're gonna click on our profile picture in the top right of the screen and then go down to settings. And then we're gonna scroll all the way down until we see developer settings. Click that. Then we're gonna click the drop down for personal access tokens and click tokens classic. 
And then in the top right, click Generate New Token, Generate New Token Classic. Now we're going to want to name our token. I'm going to call it the Harvester one. And we're also going to want to give it an expiration date. And I would recommend not setting the expiration date to no expiration for security reasons. And then lastly, we're going to have to give our token what permissions we want it to have. And for this, I will recommend that we only give it read permissions. So that would be read packages, read org, read public key, read repo hook, read user, user email, read discussion, read enterprise, read audit log, read project, read GPG key, and then lastly, read SSH signing key. Once that's all done, we can click generate token. And then here in this green box, we'll see our token that we can copy and then place in our API keys.yaml file. So just open up the etc slash the harvester slash API keys.yaml file in any text editor that you want. Once that's open, find the GitHub API key and then place the API key in this key portion. And you're going to need pseudo level privileges to save this file. To make sure that it works, we can run the harvester using the GitHub dash code source by issuing the command the harvester dash D comptia.org or whatever organization you want to run this against dash b github dash code and then i'm going to limit the results to 500. and now with the github results done we see that we gathered some different information than we did previously including an email of jdoe at comptia.org and 17 different host names now to get your api key for virus total you can sign into your virus total account click on your profile on the top right go to api key and then you can go ahead and copy this blurred out text here and paste it in the virus total portion of the API keys.yaml file, similar to what we did with GitHub. All right, that's it for this quick overview on the Harvester. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, feel free to give it a like and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.